All right, so in today's tutorial, we'll be looking at how to estimate the GBM parameters in R. So to begin with, assume we have SI to be the stock price on a given day. Then the return from the I to the next day is given as shown below. So um, now if any, the number of returns in the sample, then the drift parameter mu can be represented by the mean of the returns distribution as shown below. So basically, this is what we are going to use to estimate the, volat um, the drift parameter where delta t is the time step for one day also the volatility parameter sigma can be represented by the sample standard deviation as defined below so basically this is what we're going to use to estimate the volatility parameter so let's quickly jump into r and do this so first of all we can write a pseudo code or write a function for the um, drift parameter so pseudo code for drift um, coefficient so I'm going to name this drifts.f right so inside this I need a stock value and the lag to be one because we are going to be dealing with um, daily stock prices right so so um, from here we can go back to the formula um, we have to first of all get the number of returns to the sample and we can get it from the length of the stock value right so n should be equal to um, let me do let me use small um, number um, this should be um, number of returns in the sample right so you can get this from the length function of s once we have this we can move on to the next one how to how do we get this to get a return for the i to the next day we have to first of all set a condition for the difference the lag difference this basically define the first difference so first of all let's set a condition for that so condition set condition for lag difference so I'm gonna name this um, I'm gonna use the if statement so if n is less than 1 plus lag then I'm gonna say stop and report that s must be greater than um, 2 plus lag so basically we are um, defining this condition so that um, this will work out properly okay so the next thing to do is to define the stock value for the i and the stock value for the next day so i'm going to name this nst.val to be the stock value for the next day so we can do this um, by saying 1 plus lag to n so this basically defines the stock value for the next day I'm gonna copy this right and paste so I'm gonna change this to current day and just change this to CRT right and change the condition here this should be one to n minus lag so this defines the stop value for the current day once we have this we can set the time horizon t should be one time horizon we are looking at daily returns right so we can also get delta t to be t divided by n right change in time once we have this we can now define mu hat so mu dot hat is going to be um we are now at this level we want to define this we have defined delta t we have defined this we have defined this so we are now going to define this so um, mu hat is going to be some um let's get a stock returns first um, stk dot r 
um, let's let's get this ri right which is going to be the difference divided by the stock value for the current day so um, we are going to have an st dot val minus crt dot val right this then we divide this by crt dot val so the stock price for the current day the stock value for the next day divided by stock value for the current day that's basically what we have here so now we can now sum it so mu um, mu dot hat is going to be sum of stk dot r right let me divide this by um, n times delta t mu dot hat so um, this is basically going to display the result right so once we have this we are good to go so this basically defines or this is the pseudo code for the drift coefficient we copy the same and do for the volatility coefficient so i'm going to paste it here and just change this to volatility so see the code for the volatility coefficient i'm going to change this name to volt right so everything holds we just have to change this let's go back to the formula so um, basically we need to get r bar right we just same as mu hat and basically sum them squared and get the results so let's go back to r so um, i can say mu hat should be mean right mean of stk dot r right let me change this to let's say um, r bar right so once we have this um, that's basically this we can then get the variance so zig dot var variance of the volatility and that's going to be the sum squared right so i'm going to square this which is going to be the stock returns minus the r bar dot bar squared then we divide this by um, n minus one multiplied by delta t so once we have this we can get zik dot hat which is basically going to be the square root of the variance Zig dot bar. Zig dot bar. right so we are good to go so let's run these two estimators um, so I'm gonna run these two together all right so we have to test this on the GBM model and if you can recall in our previous tutorial we learned how to uh, write a serial code for the GBM that's basically what I'm going to use so I'm going to copy the same and just paste it here so please if you haven't watched my video on the um, simulation for GBM you can go watch that before you jump into it because I'm using the same um, serial code in here so or uh, basically you can also use the library package for gbm that is the um simulation of diffusion process um you have to load this library all right same dot diff you can also use this if you want right so um, i just want to comment on this all right let me copy this so you can either use this or you can go by this right so i'm gonna run this okay so once we have this we want to test um this the estimate of the parameters on this um see the code that you have written for the drift and volatility coefficients 
so um, let's say we need a returns I'm gonna call this returns so I'm gonna use the GBM model GBM dot function and in this we need n right and let's say we need 500 stock returns and mu should be 0 0.05 sigma should be 0 0.15 and let's say we need um, the stock the initial stock value should be let's say 10 right so let's run this so once we have this how do we estimate um, the drift coefficient? I'm going to use the function that we have already created. So drift dot f returns, right? So let's run this. Oh, oh. I use m instead of. Okay. So let me change this to m. Change this to small m. Right. I was using big N. Let's use small N. Right. So that it works right. Okay. So now let's rerun this. Let's rerun everything. We have to start from. Um, yeah. So I'm going to start from here and run everything together. All right. So I'm gonna run up to here. All right, so now I can run this. All right, so here we go. So um, we can do the same for volatility. Returns. Oh, let's see. Volatility, okay, we have to specify. Um, Zek dot hat right so that can give us a result so um let's run the volatility again or basically we can rerun everything again can run up to the air all right so let's see this drift again it changes right once we run this also, yeah, so you can see the drift has changed. Once we rerun it again, it's gonna change. Yeah, so you can see first, yeah, it's not closer. The drift coefficient is not closer. But yeah, you can see that um, the volatility um, coefficient is closer to the parameter, right? Yeah, it's getting closer, right? You can see the drift is getting closer for the second run, but the volatility is almost close. So um, basically, this how to um estimate the gbm parameters in r right so please if you find value in this video don't forget to subscribe if you haven't and also turn on the notification to get more updates thank you for watching